In the last module, we looked at general properties of aromatic molecules, which we mentioned in the last chapter. The reason why they're referred to as aromatic is because of their exceptional stability. In this chapter, we're going to look at the reactions that those aromatic molecules undergo. And the general type of reaction that we will be focusing on in this chapter is going to be referred to as electrophilic aromatic substitution. So the purpose of this video is to introduce this reaction and talk about some common features that you are going to see throughout the entire chapter. We'll be learning a wide variety of different so-called electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. And all of those are going to have some general features in common in terms of the types of things that we will see in the reaction mechanism and how to go about predicting the products of those reactions. And so what we are going to look at in this video is a general overview of this reaction type and a general mechanism for it. And then in the upcoming videos, we'll get into specific scenarios where you can do electrophilic aromatic substitution with a bunch of different types of electrophiles. These reactions are extremely important in a variety of applications, one of which is in the world of drug synthesis because a large number of different drugs have aromatic rings that have substituents on them. And the way that those structures are generally synthesized is through these electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions where we take an aromatic ring and we are able to add a substituent onto that aromatic ring. Some examples of compounds that are constructed from aromatic rings include aspirin, acetaminophen, ibuprofen, and a wide variety of drug molecules that are not just restricted to uh, anti-inflammatories and painkillers. All of those types of molecules involve this so-called electrophilic aromatic substitution, or EAS for short, in their synthesis. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at some general features of this reaction. So to begin to dissect the EAS, electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, let's dissect the phrase electrophilic aromatic substitution first. So what we're referring to when we say an electrophile is the same definition that we have used throughout org one and org two, and that is that an electrophile is going to be an electron pair acceptor. It is generally an atom that has a positive formal charge or positively polarized. So an electrophile is going to be an atom that accepts an electron pair. In other words, a Lewis acid would be another descriptor of this. And generally, in order to be willing to accept a pair of electrons from a nucleophile, this electrophile will have a positive polarization or a positive formal charge on the atom, usually. And so when we say we're doing electrophilic aromatic substitution, what we are doing is we are substituting a hydrogen atom on the ring with an electrophile. So by substitution, what we mean is that we are replacing a hydrogen from the aromatic ring with the electrophile. And I'll call the electrophile E for short because I'm not particularly creative, E for electrophile. And the word aromatic there is just reminding us that this is occurring on an aromatic ring. So written out as a schematic here, we can take an aromatic ring and what's going to happen during the course of this so-called substitution reaction is that one or more of the hydrogen atoms from that ring will be replaced with an electrophile. So the simplified rendition of this is that we have in this general reaction I've written out replaced a hydrogen atom with an electrophile. And this is going to be the theme that we will see throughout this chapter is we are going to be filling in a variety of different groups as the electrophile to illustrate reactions that we can do where we substitute out a hydrogen atom from the ring with an electrophile. And one important thing that you will notice in these reactions is that the aromaticity is maintained in going from the reactant to the final product here. And the reason that that aromaticity is not destroyed in the reactant relative to the final product is that the aromaticity confers a great amount of stability on the molecule. So unlike typical isolated alkenes or other conjugated alkene systems where we typically did addition reactions where groups would add across the carbon-carbon double bond, instead here with the aromatic system, we do a substitution reaction in order to maintain 
the aromatic ring that is present there. The mechanism for this reaction is a rather unique mechanism. And so let's take a look at a general overview of the mechanism for this type of reaction. And then what we'll do in the upcoming videos is go through the mechanism specific details for individual reaction scenarios. But if you have the general layout of this down really well, it will make understanding the specifics for individual examples a lot easier. So we're looking at kind of the general framework for how to go about writing out the mechanisms for these reactions in this video. And then we'll look at specific electrophiles and the nuances of those specific electrophiles in upcoming videos. So we'll outline the mechanism for this generic reaction shown at the top where we take E, which we define as our electrophile, and we substitute that in place of a hydrogen atom on the aromatic ring in our final product. So how does this process take place? Well, in the first step, for most of the electrophiles that we are going to deal with in this chapter, what happens is that first the electrophile is generally going to react with some sort of catalyst of the reaction to yield a stronger electrophile. We won't go into the details of this step of the mechanism here because this step is rather specific to each individual electrophile that we are dealing with. But the overall theme of this is that in each case, what's going to happen is that by reacting with the catalyst and creating a stronger electrophile, what we mean is that we increase the positive polarization of the electrophilic atom or create a positive formal charge on the electrophilic atom to make it a stronger electrophile. So we'll get into the details of specific ways that electrophiles react with catalysts to become stronger electrophiles in upcoming videos. The second step is general across a variety of different electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. And what happens in that second step is that we are going to take the electrophile, and this is generally, again, an electrophile that has undergone some reaction with a catalyst to create an even stronger, more positively polarized or positively formal charged electrophile. So what will happen in the second step of the mechanism with that highly reactive electrophile is that it is going to add across the carbon-carbon double bond of one of the carbon-carbon double bonds within the aromatic ring. And it doesn't matter which of these we choose in any case, since we're starting with benzene in these reactions, at least for now, we're going to end up with the same product. So just pick one of the carbon-carbon double bonds from the ring, bring those electrons over acting as a nucleophile to form a bond to the electrophilic atom there, which we are referring to generically as E. So what this will generate is what we refer to as an arrhenium ion. So in the arrhenium ion, I'm going to leave two of my sets of pi bonds in place. And then the third set of pi bonds, the ones that we use the blue electron pushing arrow to bring over to grab the electrophile, is going to result in the electrophile adding to one of the two carbons of the carbon-carbon bond. And since it's symmetrical, both of these are substituted with one hydrogen. In other words, it doesn't matter which of the two that we add it to. So I'm going to just bring that electrophile in, plug it on, at one of these positions. And it's not essential that you write out the hydrogen atoms explicitly in these line angle formulas. It's implied that those have to be there. But I think for purpose of learning the mechanism, it kind of helps in visualizing and keeping track of formal charges and things like that. And I am in the interest of keeping formal charges reasonable here and logical. I am going to say that our electrophile that we're using as our example here is a positively charged electrophile, has a positive formal charge on that atom E as we're calling it. So we've added the electrophile E across the carbon-carbon double bond. That is going to result in one of the two carbons of that pi bond that was lost having a positive formal charge because this carbon no longer has four bonds, it only has three. Over here we have four bonds, so we're good to go there, no need for a positive charge. Now at this point we refer to this intermediate as an arrhenium Remember that arene is the name for an aromatic ring. Arenium, the IUM there, indicates that it has taken on a positive formal charge. 
and it's taken on a positive formal charge because we've taken that pi bond and we've brought it over and grabbed it onto the electrophile with it. Now this arenium ion is a very unstable intermediate. It is not going to persist for particularly long. And the reason why is that this intermediate is not aromatic because there is an sp3 carbon atom right here. So there's no way for there to be complete electron delocalization around the ring and a planar structure when this is an sp3 carbon atom. And so this is a high energy state within the system. So this is the least favorable of the steps of the reaction mechanism because we are destroying aromaticity at this point. And so we're creating a high energy intermediate here. And that's one reason why the electrophile needs to be pretty strong, meaning pretty reactive, is because the strong electrophile, the highly reactive electrophile is going to help this reaction in becoming favorable because the electrophile will be stabilized in the reaction due to the fact that the electrophile, in this case, will lose its positive formal charge by undergoing the reaction. So that will help provide um, motivation for the reaction to move forward because the arene aromaticity that's being destroyed to create the arenium ion is going to destabilize the system. So then keeping in mind that this arenium ion is very destabilized relative to an aromatic ring, there's a lot of energetically favorable processes encouraging the reaction to restore aromaticity. And so what happens in step three is that indeed the aromaticity of the system is going to be restored. So in step two, we add the electrophile to a carbon-carbon double bond of the aromatic ring to create that transiently present arenium intermediate. And then in the third step of the mechanism, what we'll do is restore aromaticity. And this is favorable because this is going to take the system back down to a much lower energy state here at step three. So I'm gonna go ahead and redraw my arenium ion intermediate just like we had there as the product of step two. I'm just redrawing that structure. And then we say, okay, how can we go about restoring aromaticity? Well, in order to restore aromaticity, essentially what we do is an elimination reaction where we are going to eliminate or remove this particular proton that's bonded to the same carbon as the electrophile. And by removing that proton, by reacting with the base, we will free up this pair of electrons here that I'm highlighting to come over and form a pi bond to restore aromaticity. So this looks very, very much like the elimination reactions that we learned back in organic chemistry one. So let's go ahead and plug in here. I'm just going to put B as a base in the interest of keeping this mechanism generic. And what happens is the base comes in, grabs a proton from the arenium, which is acting as our acid, that is going to force this carbon-hydrogen bond to break and those electrons to come over to make a carbon-carbon double bond, thereby restoring aromaticity. And so this step is super duper favorable. The rate limiting step of this process is going to be step two of the mechanism, this step up here, because that was the step that generated the unstable arenium intermediate. Once we generate that arenium intermediate, we are good to go. The rest of this reaction is gonna take place very, very readily, very, very happily. So now we have our electrophile bonded to the aromatic ring and we've restored aromaticity at the end of this reaction. I'll go ahead and write out our conjugate acid as well because once that base picked up a proton, we would have that bond between the base and the proton that it grabbed. And so the end result here is that we will have replaced one of the protons from the aromatic ring ultimately with an electrophile. And so what we are going to spend the next several videos doing is looking at specific electrophiles that we can bring into these reactions to yield this electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction that we see here.